How exactly do fungicides work in plants, and how are they different from how herbicides work? Well, they're completely different, and, and this is something that's been interesting over the last few years, is the use of fungicides in a number of different crops like corn, soybeans, and wheat has been a sharp increase. So we want to talk about herbicides and insecticides and compare them to fungicides just a little bit because fungicides are really a different animal. They're not a super dangerous product, but you do have to know what you're doing well, if you want to get the most effectiveness out of them. Yeah, okay. The danger is a whole separate thing. Some of them are a little more dangerous than others, but they are relatively safe. But let's talk exactly how they work first. Okay, most fungicides are only going to move in the xylem of the plant. Now there are two transport systems in plants. There's the xylem and there's the phloem to move things like water and nutrients throughout the plant. All right, the xylem only moves up, the phloem moves up and down. So since most fungicides only move in the xylem of the plant, they are only going to move up. In other words, if you spray the top leaves of the plant, there's no way that the fungicide can move downward in the plant, so you are going to leave those leaves, those bottom leaves, unprotected. That's why spray coverage is so important with fungicides. You know, we talk about spray coverage with a lot of different herbicides out there, and that's fine, but that's on a whole different level than when we start talking about fungicides. You need great coverage, because for that matter, even in a single leaf, if you don't get the bottom of the leaf treated, you only get the top of the leaf treated, that fungicide is not going to move to the bottom part of the leaf to protect that. So you have to have really good coverage with fungicides. Now when we're talking about coverage, it depends on what you're trying to spray too. When you're spraying like this wheat field, for example, if you're just spraying the leaves, that's one thing. A flat fan tip can do a great job. Just jack up the pressure, jack up the gallon yeah, spray. Yeah, I mean, does you look nice at that job. canopy out there, that's really tough to penetrate through. And so that's where Darren's getting at. You want to have good pressure and good water. It's whole different than if you're spraying some little crop, like if you were to go into a soybean crop in 30 inch rows when it's four inches tall, well, you know what? You can get pretty good coverage out there with five gallons of water even, or 10 at the most. But when you start talking about some of these things like late spraying, and that does happen in corn, it happens in soybeans, happens in wheat, happens in most crops. When you're spraying fungicides late in the season and the crop is big, you've got to have a lot of water and pressure. Well, one thing that we do want to point out too is there's different times that you're going to be spraying, like in wheat, for example, if you're spraying that head, trying to protect against something like fusarium head blight, it's a whole different animal. I mean, when you've got a head that's sticking straight up and it's kind of small, the best coverage that we've seen is using a twin fan. Now, either one nozzle that sprays half the volume 45 degrees forward and half the volume 45 degrees back, or just having two nozzles and splitting the stream of water coming in and spraying some of it forward, some of it back. So you can coat up one side of the head and then as the spray boom passes over, you can coat the back side of the head as well. It's important, as Brian mentioned, to get good coverage, whether you're talking about leaves and stems or you're talking about something like the head on a wheat plant. Yeah, so it is pretty tough to stick herbicide or fungicide on there if you're spraying straight down. So that's why Darren's talking about hitting it from different angles. And that's what we've done on our own farm is using two different nozzles spraying at 45 degree angles to hit that hit. Well, anyway, coming back to the safety, since you brought that up, Darren, a lot of these fungicides actually are pretty safe. Yeah, they are pretty safe. You know, with fungicides, just like any other product, like herbicides, for example, some are a little safer than others. In general, we just want you to wear personal protective equipment, no matter what you're spraying. You don't need to get it on you. There's no positive purpose for spraying it on yourself. So try to make sure you're protected out there, no matter what you're doing. But in general, fungicides aren't any more more dangerous than most of the herbicides we're using. Now in our region we're using half rates of fungicide on soybeans. We're actually using half rates on wheat early in the season as well and that works good because we're in a drier climate, have less disease pressure. If you're in the southern United States or in an area where you're getting 45, 50 inches of rain, 60 inches of rain down south or more, you probably have a lot more disease pressure than what we have to deal with. You might need to be at full rates, but we're usually running in soybeans a half rate of a fungicide for five to seven dollars an acre. And we're getting good response on that bushel and a half or two bushels in our region. A lot of other areas of the country, guys are gaining three to five bushels where they have more disease pressure. Okay, and wheat and soybeans, chances are you can spray your own fungicides, so that's really easy. You don't have a huge application cost. In corn, however, it's a little bit different. When you start getting to corn that's starting to silk, you've got a good time there where you can protect against some diseases. 
and give some plant health benefits as well. The problem is you've probably got to hire somebody to come in and fly that on for you and you're going to add another say seven or eight dollars an acre just in the application charge plus the cost of your product. That's where it gets to be a little bit of a debate. You know how much yield are you really going to gain? Now at four to five dollar corn boy it makes it a lot easier when you only have to gain say three bushels of corn to make this work especially if you're further south and further east where you get lots of moisture this is probably a no-brainer for you. Now in the western United States Brian seems well, to think western it's corn belt. Brian western seems to think belt. it's a little more debatable. I, I'm a little bigger believer in fungicide on corn. I think it is going to pay especially when you have plenty of moisture which you really don't know at the time you're spraying. You don't yep. know if you're going to keep getting and, the rain. And that's the whole problem. But let's put it this way. In wheat, spraying fungicide twice is a no-brainer. You need to do it with a herbicide. It's so cheap. And at heading time, if you don't want to spend the money on Prasar or Karamba, you can go with Folicure for less than three bucks an acre. So you got to spray wheat with fungicide. Soybeans, I also think it's an absolute must for every farmer in the United States. It only costs five to seven dollars an acre if you're doing half-rate fungicide like in our region. If you're doing full rate, it's 10 or 12 bucks. It's a bushel of beans. It's no big deal. The corn is where it gets questionable because we're talking several bushels here you're going to need to get response back in order to be able to pay for that and that application is what kills me if we could spray it ourselves I, I'd be much more willing to do it but boy to spend seven or eight dollars to get the plane out to to do it it's, well, it's in, hard in irrigated corn it's a little bit easier to spend sure. that money you know you're going to sure. get moisture later I think in irrigated corn you got to do it and, and dry land corn in the western corn belt it gets to be a little questionable so maybe you don't put the whole farm into it but you say you know what I'm going to try it on a few different fields do some strips out there do half of a field or something like that and see what kind of difference I see in my farm yeah so far on our farm I'll just tell you we haven't had a lot of response we've had some response but it hasn't been this overwhelming thing like I hear about very commonly in Iowa and Illinois, areas where they have more disease pressure. Well, I think it's a big response when you have some issues out there like some light hail or something like that. We have seen a difference on our farm in that. So there can be some issues out there, but it's something to look at on your farm. Well, once again, it is important to understand how fungicides work if you're going to do a good job controlling diseases. It's also important to understand how to control our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show.